Okay, so section 4.2 is reflections. And a reflection is a transformation that uses a line like a mirror to reflect a figure. And the mirror line is called the line of reflection. You'll see these need to be added to your vocab packet. Um, if you can't figure out the, the definition from here, where also can you guys go to find the definitions? The textbook online like we did yesterday in class. Right. A reflection of the line. Now here's something I want to show you right here. Reflection in a line. This is a weird vocabulary thing that you're going to want to say wrong every single time even though it sounds so right. A reflection in a line. So when we talk about reflecting over a line, we don't actually say over a line. We say in a line. So here, a reflection in a line M. So you can see the line's called M. Maps every point P. So here's point. To a point P prime. So that, that P is not on line M. Then it is the perpendicular bisector then line M becomes a perpendicular bisector. That means it's the exact same distance. You can see it's marked congruent, and it makes a perpendicular line. So what I'm doing is I'm taking point P. This is what they've done. It's already done, so you can't really tell what they've done. And we are reflecting it, but in order to reflect it, I have to find the exact same distance on the other side of the line, and it has to be perpendicular, that distance has to be perpendicular to the line. So the stuff that we did in the last chapter has to be the same distance, which means it makes perpendicular. And then if the line is on, if the point is on that reflection line, then it just stays there. <coughs> so let's graph triangle ABC. It's the same vertices for all four of these. So let's graph triangle ABC quickly on all four of these, and then we will reflect it. So A is at 1, 3. B is at 5, 2, and C is at 2, 1. How do I know to make it a triangle? Because what? Nope, that's not the only reason. Because it says triangle right there. Because remember, three points could be an angle. <coughs> but then it would have an angle symbol here. So I know it's a triangle because it says this is a triangle. Okay, now it says we're going to reflect in the line N. So line N is going to be at X equals 3. So what we need to do is find X equals 3. X equals 3. 1, 2, 3. X equals 3 is a vertical line with an X intercept at 3. Here's my x equals 3. So in order to reflect in this line, for example, point A has to, I've lost my pen. Oh, here it is. Point A has to go the same distance from x equals 3, has to be perpendicular so if I go 2 completely horizontal to this line, then I'm going to go 2 horizontal on the other side. That's going to be my A prime. I'm using a different color because they're going to overlap. B is 2 away, so I'm going to go 2 away the other direction, B prime. And then C is just 1 point away, so I'm going to go 1 point away in the other direction, C prime. So it should look like I folded the paper right on this x equals 3 line, and the dots would match up. It's a reflection. You guys see it? Do we see the reflection? Okay. As I'm waiting for you guys to catch up, I'm going to graph ABC on this other on these other triangles, or uh, uh, sorry, coordinate planes.
Okay, question B says, in the line M, so line M is going to be at Y equals 1. So I go and I find where Y is 1. This is where Y is 1. It's going to be a horizontal line. That's my line M. Y equals 1. So if C is on the point, or I'm sorry, on the line, if C is on the line, when I reflect in the line, in the, when I reflect in the, doesn't it sound so terrible to say it that way? Yeah, I don't like it either, but that's how you say it. When we reflect in the line, where does point C end up, C prime end up being? The exact same place, because it's already on the line of reflection, so C prime ends up in the exact same place. A is above the line, so A is going to end up below the line, A prime. Has to end up the exact same distance away, so if it's two above, then it's two below. B is one above, so now B is one below. B prime is one below. I didn't put my C prime in a very good place. You can't see it very well. But. Next one is uh, line P. X equals negative 2. So we go on the X axis and we find negative 2. And we draw a vertical line at x equals negative 2. That is line P. Point A is three points from that line. So I go three points in the other direction for A prime. C is 1, 2, 3, 4 from the line. And B is... <laughs> Seven from the line. Somebody have questions about this? Are these rigid motions? rigid motion mean? You went over it today. Are these rigid motions? What is a rigid motion? Same length, same angles. Do these end up exactly the same length, same angles? We're not changing the shape. We're not changing um, how big the angles are. We're not changing how long the sides are. These are rigid motions. They just end up in a different way. Now, they don't, they're not going to end up parallel like the other ones did. I'm just going to skip the third one, okay? Oh, did this not copy on the back? I swear. Sometimes I open and it doesn't do what I tell it to do on the copier. All right, reflecting in the y equals x line. So y equals x is a really important line in all of your um, math courses. y equals x is the line where all the numbers in X are all equal to the same numbers in Y. So these would be ordered points like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Anybody else? 4, 4. Any more creative ones? Oh, I can't write that. It was true, but what? What was another one? Huh? 23, 23. What if I told you negative 1.4? It'd be negative 1.4, right? So where that line is, 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 <laughs> straight diagonal up the center of the coordinate plane. I'm just going to dash it so you guys can see it. This is y equals x. Okay. 
So that is going to be our reflection line. That's a really important reflection line that's used a lot in other mathematics courses. We're going to graph FG with endpoints negative 1, 2 and 1, 2. There's FG. And then we are going to graph its image after we do the reflection. So this is a little bit harder because we need to go the exact same distance away. It has to make a perpendicular line with um, y equals x. Gosh. In order to make a perpendicular line with y equals x, what do I know about the slope? Opposite reciprocal. So what is the slope of this line? One. So the perpendicular slope is going to be negative one. So what I need to do is I need to start at f, and I need to go down one over one, down one over one, until I have done the exact same amount on the other side, which is just twice, I believe. Is it twice? No, it's, gosh, I, can't, I made mine too small now, and I did it. It would be down one over one, down one over one, down one. Here, that's where it would be. I did it in the wrong spot the first time. And I would do the same thing with G, down one over one. This is where it end up being. Maybe I'll make it in a different color. It's hard to see because I, I wrote the other part in orange. <laughs> That's where it ends. That's a terrible drawing. I'm sorry. That's where it ended up being. <coughs> so verify that f, f prime is perpendicular to the line. We did that by using the slope. Okay. Um, here's coordinate rules, so you don't actually have to just kind of use your slope. There's actual coordinate rules for reflections in specific places. If it is a reflection in the x-axis, then the image would be A negative B. I want to show you this with your hand. Okay. I do this in algebra 2, so Avni knows what I'm going to do. He's the only one. Um, if we're going to reflect in the x-axis, I want everybody to take their arm and make it an x-axis. Yeah. You are my model because <laughs> now we're going to take an object and put it above this line. And my object is in the Now what we're going to do is we're going to reflect in the x-axis, which means over the x-axis. We're going to reflect in the x-axis. I should take this hand and reflect it in the x-axis. What happens? What happens when we reflect this in the x-axis? Tell me some things that happen. Tell me some things that happen. What turns negative? What well, part of it? What is this part of the graph? The y, not axis, but the y starts with a C. The y coordinate. If the y is up here at 5, now the y is down here at negative 5. The y values change some. What do the x values do if I go from here to here? Left to right, what happens? Nothing. Nope. Was that off for a while? Yeah. <coughs> so this is saying if we reflect in the x-axis, the x's stay the same. It's the y values that change. That's what it says right here. So like writing that like a rule, it would be x, y, whoops, arrow, x, comma, negative y. That would be my rule for reflection in the x-axis. Reflection in the y-axis, everybody give me a y-axis. Give me a y-axis. Let me see your y-axis. Let me see it. I want you to put something on the side of the y-axis. What happens if we reflect our hand in the y-axis? What's changing? 
So the x coordinate goes from positive to negative, to positive to negative, right? So here you see if we have x, y, it goes to negative x, y. It's kind of backwards of what you'd think. If we reflect in the x-axis, the y's change. If we reflect in the y-axis, the x's change. It's opposite of what you think. And then if we reflect in the line y equals x, look what happens to the ordered pairs. Instead of a, b, we now have b, a. So if I have x, y for my original ordered pairs, what's my rule going to look like? y, x. We just change the two numbers. We switch them around. And then reflect in the y equals x. If I have x, y, look what happens. The a and the b change and they switch their signs. So I will have negative y, negative x. Okay, so reflect in the y equals x line. This is the y equals x line. It goes negative of the y equals x line. It goes down instead of up. Graph a, b points a, 3, negative 1, do, 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 boop, a, and then b is 3, 2. Okay, so I'm going to use the rules that say x, y, arrow, negative y, negative x. So instead of 3, negative 1, a prime is going to be switch the numbers and change their signs. So instead of 3, negative 1, I'm going to have positive 1, negative 3. A prime, positive 1, negative 3. Instead of uh, b, which is 3, 2, b prime is going to be negative 2, negative 3. So I switch the numbers and switch the signs. Negative 2, negative 3. Are they the same length? Yes. Would they make 90 degrees if I connected A to A prime or B to B prime? Would these make 90 degree angles? Yes. I can also verify that by checking the slope. Up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. So it, it says verify the perpendicular slope is one. So that works. All right, I think this is the last section. Let me make sure. I think it is. Oh, it pretty much is. Um, a glide reflection is the last real thing that we're doing today. Um, by the way, reflections are rigid motions, which I already talked about, which preserves all their length and their angles. And then glide reflection is something that you're going to want to add to your vocab packet later. A glide reflection is a transforming transformation that involves a translation followed by a reflection. So we translate it and then we reflect it. We translate it and then we reflect it. We glide, reflect. So here we're going to perform composition functions called glide reflections. Let's go ahead and graph triangle ABC, 3, 2, 6, 3, and 7, 1. How do I know this is a triangle? Why? Because that triangle symbol is right here that says this is a triangle. We're going to try, oh, of course I did 12. I don't know why. I'm, I didn't do 12. It was the book. Um, of course they did 12. <laughs> That's okay. Um, oh, we'll be fine. It'll still be on there because I'm starting all the way at here at 3. So if we translate to the which direction 12? Which direction 12? Which way am I going 12? To the left because it's minus on the x. So we're going to go to the left 12. I'm going to start at point A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's going to be my A 
prime. Then we're going to do the same thing to B. B prime. Then we're going to do the same thing to C. C prime. What was I doing to my Y values? Or why did I do nothing to my Y values? Mm. Austin, what's this mean for the Y values? And it doesn't change. We keep the same y values. Okay, and now we're going to do reflection in the x-axis. So if we do reflection in the x-axis. If you need your, your chart for now, that's fine, but eventually you have to figure it out without the chart. So if I have an x-axis and I have something above the x-axis or below it, and I'm going to reflect in the x-axis, what is actually changing it? What part of this is changing? It's the y's that are changing. So if I have x, y, I'm now going to have x negative y. So here, where my y's stayed the same, my x's changed. I'm going to keep my same x's. I'm just going to take the negative version of the y's. I didn't write down my three ordered pairs for this. But what am I at? Negative 9, 2. I'm now going to be at negative 9, negative 2. Here I was at 6. 4, no, 6, 3, now I'm at 6, negative 3. For C, I was at 5, 1, now I'm at 5, negative 1. That is called a glide reflection. Okay, the next one is a U try. It's the exact same original triangle as the one we just did. So the first triangle graphing it should be easy. U try.
the big idea is this is your assignment for yeah, I didn't go over the symmetry thing, but I feel like you guys should be able to do that. Already. I can do it on the video, but um, like I said, I should probably get it over. I don't. I know you're not cleaning up because you're just taking out your computer, right? You guys were supposed to try the lines of symmetry on your own. I'm just going to answer up here for anybody. Nope, that's not one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to put this up for anybody who was actually watching the video this long. Be one, and this would be one. What's a hexagon? Who knows what a hexagon is? Nobody knows what a hexagon is? Yes, you do. My daughter knows what a hexagon is. Figure, yeah. Closed figure. So I got six. You guys have uh, big ideas online. You do not have to do the Desmos thing. We can do that on Friday. It's kind of a fun challenge, but we'll, we'll save that for Friday. <laughs>